wood stone ovens make great pizza, but you can also cook all kinds of other things in there while you're doing pizza. So you really get the most out of that hot oven chamber at all times. What we've got here, we're gonna demonstrate how to cook. We've got basically a, a rare bit dish with some shrimp and a compound butter. Uh, we'll finish that with a little wine. We're gonna cook a steak in there. Here's a little queso dip. This could be any kind of uh, myriad of dips that you're cooking. Could even be serving them with some house-made pita chips. I'm gonna refire some of the wings that I cooked off earlier. And then I also have a half chicken that I had cooked off earlier. Uh, this would be to refire to order. This is just salt and pepper, and we're gonna re-therm them on a sizzle platter. These standard aluminum sizzle platters are just an incredibly useful tool for cooking all kinds of things in our ovens. Uh, I like to leave a couple of them sitting right in the oven uh, to keep them warm. So when I, when I put the steak in, I'm gonna put it right on a, a searing hot sizzle platter and start that crusting right away. All right, so we have some, some chicken wing sections that uh, we pre-cooked earlier on a sheet pan with a cooling rack. That was while the oven was heating up. Uh, those have been in the refrigerator. Uh, they could, you know, I could be using these for the next few days. You could really load up a bunch of sheet pans and, you know, cook hundreds of wings while you're heating your oven up. I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to get these too close to the fire because I, I want them to heat through. They are refrigerator temperature, so I'm going to uh, just tuck them away. Out of my way. Not too close to the flame. Uh, the thing I'm want, going to want net right up next to the flame are these shrimp. Seafood, you, you just cook it as fast and hot as you can, and it retains its moisture. And it pop that right back in, right in the hottest spot in the oven. This half chicken was, was one of a few that were uh, pre-cooked earlier while the oven was heating up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. It, it needs a bit of time to heat up, so I don't want it right next to the flame. Again, I'm gonna kinda hug the edge of the oven. Get it over by the by the wings. Now, I also have a hot uh, queso dip. It's not hot right now, and I don't want it to uh, get too hot too fast and look burned on the top. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get it in here. I'm gonna actually tuck this just around the side here, and once I see it bubbling, then I'll move it over toward the flame to finish it the way I like it. But this one I'm just going to hide right in this little spot inside the door. Here's where the skill with the peel comes in. You can go in and grab one of those trays right off the stack. You could have 20 of them stacked up there if you wanted to. Okay, now if you have a really fatty steak, uh, you could probably get away without any oil. This is a New York strip steak and I even did trim it a little bit. So I'm using a little bit of oil on the pan to start with. And here's what we're waiting to hear. Yeah, that's what you want to hear. And I'm going to take this and I'm even going to move those shrimp aside just a little bit because I want this right in front of the fire as well. Now, got some food in there. I'm bumping up the flame a little bit because uh, this stuff goes fast and I want it to go fast and I want the heat to be intense. When I get the flame up, so this, this is a strategy for when you're doing multi-entree cooking and some pizzas and flatbreads as well. So I'm also gonna load a few pizzas in here, but they just won't be up near that flame. When you're using the area near the flame to do some really high temperature entree cooking, you're never gonna put a pizza up there. So you're gonna keep the pizzas back at least a foot from the flame, even if you don't have any of your high temperature entrees up there, because that floor is gonna get progressively hotter um, up to where the, the pizzas would burn immediately. So when you need to manipulate some of these pans and move them around, the, the bubble hook is actually pretty handy, pretty gentle. Give it a nice little spin. You can use the utility peel for that as well. That steak's not quite ready to flip. Get in there, take care of a couple of pizza bubbles. Make sure the dip's looking right. I'd say that those wings are just about there. 
we'll get them in the middle and there we are. All right, those wings are looking good. I'm gonna go on in with my utility peel right over those pizzas. It's always good just to stop it at the door, have a look at it. Uh, if you need to temp it, it's a good place to do that. I can, I can tell by the, the sizzling and the bubbling that these are up to temp. So even when the pizzas are back from the flame, they still need, need to be spun because you still have most of your uh, direct radiant heat coming off that back wall and from that flame. Ooh, these are nice, bubbly, airy pizzas. Okay, this queso dip is starting to get loose. I start to see a little bit of bubbling around the side. So we're getting nice and warm. I'm gonna go ahead and put that up by that flame and get me get a little bit of uh, real browning on top of it. That's the look I'm going for. Let's bring these shrimp out and have a look. Nicely done. The compound butter has worked its way through there. It's boiling in the bottom. Give those a nice little stir. Out to the table they go. All right. That pie is looking nice. Always a good practice to check the bottom. Looks excellent. I'm going to carefully pull this queso back. You could have that on a sizzle platter just in case you get some spillover. Uh, you can be careful with it though. Maybe you don't need to fill it quite as full as I did. Uh, that looks pretty nice. Okay, so this steak's been going. This is a big, thick New York strip. It's been in there for about five minutes already with the fat side facing the fire. That's getting nice and crisp. So what I wanna do now Give it a flip. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a beautiful surface right there. Uh, we're gonna let the bottom of it catch up. Now, I know the fat side's looking good, so I'm gonna go ahead and just face the other side toward the fire for the sake of evenness. Uh, this needs maybe another two and a half, three minutes, and then a nice four or five minute rest. Let's check on this chicken that we're retherming. From refrigerated, stored, you know, pre-cooked and, and then stored in the fridge, uh, these are gonna be probably about a 10 minute reheat, as long as 15. It, it depends on how cold it gets in the fridge and kind of what it's seasoned with. Uh, the sweeter the seasoning, the further from the fire you wanna have it uh, because you wanna give it its time to heat all the way through without burning on the outside. This chicken was prepared with simply salt and pepper, and so it can actually handle uh, some good intensity to get some color on it. So I'm gonna finish this for just, uh, just put it with that steak and give it uh, another two minutes up by the fire. Give it some real color. Nice, ready to go out to the table. All right, that chicken and steak look about done. We'll check for sure with the uh, thermometer before we pull the, the chicken. Although it was already fully cooked, we want to make sure it's up around 150 for a good, good uh, taste experience. Yep, that one needs just a little more time. I'm going to stick it back in, but I'm going to keep it away from the fire because I've given it plenty of color. This steak spent about five minutes on the first side, the side that's now up. And then I gave it about three minutes on this other side. I'm gonna give this a four or five minute rest. Then I'll be ready to, ready to plate up. Okay, so that's gorgeous. Uh, the radiant flame and all the radiant heat bouncing around in there just renders and crisps that skin so well. This is the second cooking for this bird. So I had cooked it to just done in about 20 minutes, 25 minutes earlier today. And uh, now I've, I've refired it and 
painted it with the color that I'm after. And that's what you can do with the radiant flame. With proximity to that flame and the flame height, you can really determine how you want your food to look. And as we say here at Woodstone, we've always said this and it can't be more true, color is flavor. Okay, so once again, nothing's in the oven. Uh, I don't have anything more to put in there right now. I cannot forget to turn that flame down. I've got it down to about two, which was, you know, that, that translates to about a three or four inch flame. That's gonna hold the oven nicely without overheating the floor. So this is the big New York strip steak that was in there on the sizzle platter. Um, it's cooked to a, a nice medium rare medium here. Uh, threw a few shrimp on there. Uh, this cooked for about five minutes on the first side with the fat facing the fire flipped it, cooked for another three minutes. 